that was a showman. He, he's flamboyant and he's loud. He's extremely fast. He's amazing to fight. He moves a lot. He's just constantly thinking martial arts. Robert is totally, totally unique. I just gotta keep my head covered all the time. <laughs> Lightning fast and very flexible. Sometimes it feels like electric shock, and sometimes I just feel sheer pain. Oh, he's going to the moon. <laughs> Robert Devan, he's the world champion martial artist, I suppose, world champion at martial arts. We saw him at the top of the show, and here he is. Robert, what can I say? But hiya! 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's a bit predictable. But listen, you're only 21, right? You're Irish, and you're the world champion at martial arts. How did that all happen? I started martial arts when I was about five or, or six years of age. I was quite young because my parents were studying martial arts at the time. My father was doing some boxing and some karate, and my mother was studying judo. When he was going to school, you know, when, when he was in the national school, um, there was a kung fu club uh, nearby. Well, it was kung fu classes and so far as it was run mainly, mainly for children. And uh, because it was near the school, uh, we brought him along to that and he showed an immediate interest and uh, never looked back. You know. So, like boxing, we use we also have a jab, okay. we have a cross, uh -huh. we have hooks uh -huh. off both hands and uppercuts. Okay. And then what's unique to um, sport karate is we have a back fist, okay. which whips out and back, whips out and back. So it's a very fast strike. Then we also have the reverse punch, which yeah. comes off That's the waist, very karate, yeah. which is very which is very karate, which comes in yeah. and back. Martial arts as a kid was a, was a great influence um, because it teaches kids like self-discipline and self-confidence which it taught me and it also enabled me to be good at all sports. And I, I found that it was great for fitness and it was great for strength and I mean it was great for so many different things that I really got a lot, a lot out of it as a sport and a, as a way of life. He just became so committed and so interested that you, you just couldn't stop him taking part. I was eight days overdue and I had to find out why and they discovered that his right hand was above his head. And he actually shook the guy in his hand before he was born and they had to break his collarbone to get the arm back down so that he could be born. <laughs> so this guy came out with his right hand up first. So you've gone like all over the world for this. That's when you right, go over yeah. to America for competitions, for world-class competitions, mm. are you surprised that an Irish man can be top of the field? They're, they're very surprised and they're not very happy about it okay. sometimes because uh, like, like in a lot of the sports, the Americans dominate yeah. um, the, all the sports and the, the same is true for the martial arts as well. Um, so when they, when they see an Irish man winning, they're not, they're not very happy about it. I've achieved a lot in a very short period of time. Um, from the competitions, from competing especially, uh, I've won like national, Irish, British, European and several uh, world titles. So I've been very, very lucky uh, that way and thankfully I've picked up no serious injuries. He has won numerous Irish titles, too many to mention, uh, British championships, uh, European, European and world championships and most recently he went away and won the American Sports Karate Association championships, probably the most respected in the world. Robert's probably one of the top sportsmen around, very competitive and very professional. I mean, Robert's approach to competition is, before competition, he'll research the people he's fighting or the people that he's going to be competing against for form. So, he, like, I mean, he's a professional in every aspect. Goes out, watches videotapes, reads articles on them, and because a lot of people, they'll say, oh, this is my favorite technique, blah, blah, blah. And he will know exactly what they're going to go, which they're going to want to try. So he's always mentally and physically prepared, which is the mark of um, a true professional to me. In Ireland, Robert doesn't face too much competition. Basically, he, he, he is the top contender in, in Ireland, and basically he's a lot, a lot of talent there. But basically, in Ireland, the competitors aren't really as good as Robert. Well, I think he's wonderful in his achievements. But knowing him, he isn't happy. He still wants to achieve more. He is a very strong, demanding personality, but he knows exactly what he wants and he normally gets it.
Training is the priority of my life, I mean, to win the competitions and if you're competing internationally you have to train a lot. So um, I generally could train and compete um, a few hours every day, um, it would have to be a good few hours every day. A mixture of everything, it could be anything from swimming, running, weights to actual sparring. I think what frightens people of participating in martial arts is the, is the level of fitness uh, that's required if you're going to participate because you must be very, very fit if you're, if you're going to, to participate. Uh, you wouldn't have the stamina or, or, or the speed otherwise. But if you want to be a competitor, if you want to be a successful competitor like in any other sport, you've got to watch your weight, you've got to train cardiovascularly, muscularly, you've got to train flexibility, you've got to train speed. It's a big commitment. It is a big commitment. He won't eat fat, he won't eat chocolate, he won't eat... You won't drink, you won't smoke, it's just constant health food. In martial arts, people fall by the wayside very early because when they join up and they don't become Bruce Lee's in a fortnight or in a month, they become disillusioned and, and they drop out. Well, a lot of people when they think of martial arts, they only think of the fighting side and they think of just a gang of guys just punching each other, kicking each other, they think of it as, as um, probably a rougher version of boxing. But the truth is, martial arts is a lot more than that. Like the, the amount of training, the amount of dedication, the amount of discipline that goes into it. You have to be intelligent to be a good martial artist because it's very, very hard training. You have to be dedicated. Um, but it's just one of those misconceptions. We, we are classed as being the thugs of being martial arts because it's fate. Martial arts ain't just about fate. Martial arts is about health, healing, fitness, self-defense. We actually take thugs off the street and we teach them respect, discipline and improve their health. With a lot of very good martial arts, you actually see that they're not aggressive. It's when you're coming up to the, to the ranks that you see some people are acting a bit. But black belts in the book, they aren't actually that aggressive because they know what they can do. And they don't feel the need to go out and prove themselves, you know, by acting up, pushing people or, you know, throwing the weight around. I would apply it as a lifestyle. Um, it can really improve your health for a start. It's, very, it's a good confidence booster. And um, if children can be taught at an early age, I think, then it, it can be a, a boost to their, their character. Martial arts teach a lot of very important things nowadays that can be parallel to religions or other inversion spirituality. First of all, discipline. Second, teaches you a lot of respect. Teaches you also self-control. And as part of respect can be broken into self-respect and also respect for others. It's a spiritual journey as well as a physical one. You want to develop yourself mentally and physically to the best of what you can be. 